Welcome to the Bentley Systems Training Course to learn how to model gravity loads in the RAM Structural System RAM Modeler. Over the next series of videos, you will learn how to model some gravity loads, which will include defining the member load in the self-weight criteria, modeling superimposed gravity surface loads, modeling gravity line and point loads, and also how to model snow loads in the RAM Modeler. In this video, you will learn how to model snow loads in the RAM Structural System RAM Modeler. Snow loads are distributed to supporting members as a series of trapezoidal loads based on tributary area and in the direction indicated by the deck orientation. There are two types of snow loads that can be applied to the model. We can apply a constant snow load, which will apply the same magnitude load to the entire load polygon, or we can also model drifting snow loads, snow drift loads that are represented by a surface load polygon with a sloping plane. Before snow loads can be assigned to the model, they must first be defined in the property table. The first step in modeling snow loads on our sample structure is to go to our Layout Loads toolbar and select our Layout Loads icon. When this icon is selected, you will see that all of the tools available to enter our property tables and model loads will now become available. Our first step in modeling our snow loads is to enter our snow load information into the snow loads property table, which can be accessed through the snow loads icon in the layout loads toolbar. For this particular exercise, we're going to be modeling both types of snow loads. We're going to do our constant or flat roof snow load, and we're also going to create a drifting snow load, which would be typical if you had some type of roof projection on your structure. I'm going to enter my first load as my constant flat roof snow load. So I'm going to enter my label and enter my uniform snow load magnitude of 30 PSF and then click Add. And you can see I've created my first load in my property table. I can add as many snow loads or drifting snow loads that are required for my sample structure. I'm going to enter one more for a roof projection. I'm going to select a drifting snow load and then I need to enter the magnitudes that are going to help it form that trapezoidal load. For my drift magnitude 1 and 2, I'm going to enter this as the peak of my snow load, or 80 PSF. Then for my drift magnitude 3, I'm going to enter this as my minimum snow load, which will actually be equivalent to my flat roof snow load of 30 PSF. Once I enter all the appropriate information for this snow load, I'm going to go ahead and click on the Add button, and then I'll click OK. Once you have finished entering all of your snow loads in your property table, you are now ready to lay out your snow loads, which you can use through the Layout Snow Loads icon in the Layout Loads toolbar. Once I select this icon, I can see that I have any of the snow loads that I created in the property table available. Just like surface loads, the last load that is modeled will govern at a particular location if you have overlapping loading configurations. So first what I'm going to do is I'm going to model my flat roof snow load over the entire floor system. So I'm going to select my flat roof snow load and then I'll click on the whole floor button. And here you can see I've modeled that flat roof snow load over the entire area. Then I'm going to right click to return right back to the snow load layout mode dialog and I'm going to select my roof projection load. Now whenever you enter a roof drift to model it on your plan, we are going to have to use the Add button. As you can see, the whole floor button is not available for this type of load. So I'm going to go ahead and click Add, and then I'm going to click on the area that defines my loading polygon. First, I'm going to click on Grid Intersection F2. Then I'm going to go up to F4. Then I'm going to go over to G4, G2, and then back to close my polygon. Now since this is a drifting snow load, I need to define where my drift magnitudes are occurring. So here I have drift magnitudes 1 and 2 as the peak of my snow load, 
and I want the peak of the snow load to be along grid line F. So I'm going to select, since I know that was my first point and my second point I selected, I'm going to enter those, my first point and my second point, as the location for the peak of my snow load. Then to enter the location for the minimum value of my snow load, I'm going to pick one of the points along grid line G. And here I'll select the third point I selected, which will coordinate with G4. So basically along this line I'm going to have 80 PSF and then it's going to slope down trapezoidally down to 30 PSF. Once I've done setting my drift magnitudes, I can go ahead and click OK. Now the different hatched areas do indicate which type of load is governing at that location. And you can see that since I modeled my drifting snow load second, that that area is governing where these two areas are overlapping. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.